Good evening, welcome to the University of Worcester Arena. It is uh, MBL Division 2 North men's action for you tonight. Hometown Worcester Wolves taking on the visiting Doncaster Eagles. Early season, of course, Worcester Wolves currently sitting third in the league, but both of these teams have uh, played one game. Doncaster dropped their first one, but uh, Worcester certainly made theirs. And uh, but as I say, early season, not too much to read into the league at this point in the season. Intriguing game, this bit of BBL experience on the floor as well. Rob Marsden, of course, uh, formerly of Leeds and Manchester, and uh, obviously Lucas McGregor on, uh, on uh, the Wolves roster. So that is always adds a little bit of extra spice to these encounters. And there's a bit of that peppered throughout um, NBL Division 2 this season. I'm delighted to be joined by Shanice Turner. I've got a proper professional sat next to me tonight <laughs> who's going to explain everything and he's going to make sense of all of my drivel that I normally speak every game. So it's really good. Great to see you. And thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for agreeing to do this at the 11th hour, <laughs> which was great. Reese uh, was not here today. So, uh, let's say he talks almost as much nonsense as me, so that's absolutely perfect. And, uh, I'd say that to him, by the way. <laughs> it's all good, you know. So, Shanice, obviously, you're no stranger to the, to the setup here. You know, with the, 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 the team last season, I know we had a, it was a tough season, it was a bit on off, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I'd say maybe last couple of years, but, uh, you know, thinking about tonight's game, as I said, a bit of BBL experience across both of these teams. Doncaster finishing third in the league last year, so they're a strong outfit for certain. You know, if you were uh, Dean Blake coming into this, what would you be, sort of, how would you be organising things? Well, they, they have eight players, so it's going to be a small and um, short rotation for them. So, we've actually got a full bench um, that was the wall. So, for me, maybe try to run them off the floor, try and get them tired, and maybe bring the game and play the game the full quarter. A big defensive, big defensive effort needed for Worcester tonight. I know we say it every game, you know, when we're... We sat here like armchair coaches, really. <laughs> you know, but we saw in the, you know, the women's game earlier today, which I'm sure you were here for that, you know, where uh, it was all a question of sussing out the defence in that yeah, game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah, today. definitely, yeah. I think with the women's game earlier on, it was just turnovers after turnovers because they wasn't reading the defence properly, and I feel like that's something that they can take from that game, and then hopefully in the next game bring the win home, so... Yeah. yeah, we've got people like Rob, you know, a guy like Rob Marsden on this team. You know, he's guy who's been there and he's done it. You know, he's kind of seen it all. They're going to need to do a job on him today. He's a big presence in the block, you know. Yeah, it's going to bring a lot of experience as well. And Wolves do have quite a young team, so it's going to be very interesting on how they take that. Yeah, well, Wolves, as we say, coming into this game, they've been pretty confident this season. You know, they won the league uh, last year, just missed out on the cup at the end of the season. But uh, it's been uh, it's been quite a ride since uh, all the changes that took place here at the club. But uh, Worcester Wolves is in rude health at the moment. Yeah. The whole organisation. Yeah, definitely. And so, tell us about yourself. So you went to Gloucester for WBBO last year. Yeah, so the second half of the year I went to Gloucester. Nursing um, an injury now. Yeah, um, ruptured my ACL sadly, so I'm out for the season. But um, my time there I definitely gained a lot of experience, and the difference between D1 and WBBL is. It's huge. Like yeah. you didn't, I wouldn't, didn't realise it was that big, to be honest. Um, and obviously, the WBBL have had a lot more of experienced players, so yeah. it's great to get against that, anyway. So you're now back here at uh, Worcester yeah. as an observer. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> well, they got a bit of school uniform once, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So, a quick run down the rosters. Uh, home team this afternoon, Jacob Dim and Jacob Solverson, Panos Calabalas. Evan Longman, Wilfred Sante, Tom Grayling, Malachi Peterson, Mate Baltiano, Isaiah Walker, Arian Davudi, Lucas McGregor, of course, the omnipresent Lucas McGregor, and uh, Ivan Ververo Rodriguez. That's going to be Wilfred Sante, Baltiano, Walker, McGregor, and Rodriguez starting this afternoon for Worcester. It'll be Carl Alexander, Paul Walsh, Alexander Root, Tom Hodgson, and Josh Metcalf starting today for. Uh, the uh, Doncaster Eagles, Sam Spate, Zach Wally, Tyler, Lysia, Michak, Holondo, uh, Jack Stanley coming off the bench, and of course Rob Marson, the captain, ably coached, of course, by their head coach, Andrew Wally. It's quite a tough one, isn't it, when you've got a short roster? This is much a, this is much a, a, a battle of stamina, mm. I guess, as, as it is, you know, defensive organisation or offensive energy. Oh yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Like, if Worcester play this right and do higher out Doncaster, I think it will be um, a tight run. 
Um, as you said, Doncaster um, were quite high up the table last season, so it's going to be a really tough game. So for them to even have a chance to win, I do feel like they do need to pile them down a little bit. Yeah, and quite, you know, you look at last season, their points difference was, what, 176. They were pouring points at, at Will last season. Oh, yeah. You know, so I guess, again, it's a question of every point counts. We were saying during the, uh, the comms for the, the women's game earlier on, you know, that you've got, it's a quite, you know, every point counts come the end of the season. If you're battling for that fourth spot for the playoffs, you know, and yeah. you're equal on points, it could come right down to one or two buckets that you may have scored. Hence yeah. why you've got to keep going, you know, to the end. You do. Every offense matters, for yeah. sure. We'll see this afternoon. Anyway, players taken to the floor. And um, as we said, Doncaster third last year in uh, Division Two. You know, really experienced outfit. Rob Marsden, the captain, leading from the front. And I think a slight change on those starters. Rob Marsden is actually going to start this afternoon. So we can blame the table for giving us the wrong numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so, there it is. Alexander Root. I think it's um, Todd Hodgson. going to be Rob Marston, the big man, to jump it up. Big, big presence and uh, one of the leaders of that uh, Leeds team when they came into the BBL several years ago. Had a spell with uh, Plymouth as well. And it's going to be Marston and Isaiah Walker to jump this one up for us. We're on underway. So, opening tip taken by Wolves. Find their way in early, Balti Arnu. Some big performances in for us the last season. Hugely significant presence for them. Alexander straight away, firing up from downtown, no good. Yeah, the battle of the board's going to be really important this afternoon. There are some big bodies out there today. Walker spins inside, just avoids that extra step. Opens a scoring for Wolves. Walsh. We've got a Marsden at the top. Double team comes, going to Marsden. Good movement around the perimeter from uh, from Doncaster. Route into Hudson. Oh, <laughs> it's just gonna it's gonna railroad him, I think whatever Literally happened. Actually knocking right to the floor. <laughs> high energy start from Worcester. A very high energy, and I think that's what they need. They do need to like show their presence in this game. Marsden. Marsden. Good take from Marsden. Finds the opening too. From Wolves, it's kind of you get a sense of quite an evenly matched team, as you say. It was a short roster, so it's yeah. going to be a question of how do you how do you handle that rotation because you haven't got that luxury, you know. Wolster triple deep in every position. Jab step from Walker to find his way inside. A foul is called. Travel. So turnover ball. Alexander over the timeline. Three attempt. Really good. Alexander Root cannot connect. Going down to Walker. And uh, that is going to be an offensive foul. Two minutes played. Two apiece on the board. Yeah, I think Doncaster have come here for a game this afternoon. Alexander. Looks like Rob Marsden still got the price ticket on his uh, shirt there. He's going to send it back. He's going to go back to the post office when you're finished. Marsden has to muscle his one inside. Can't hold on to the basket, but Wilfred Sante now sliced his way through the defence. Rodriguez, McGregor for three. No good. Oh, he goes. Wipes its feet. Well, that's the home court bounce right there. And uh, 
but Doncaster not leaving anything off the floor. Four, of course, they do have to be very careful here. They're already on three fouls, and they're only three minutes in. Absolutely. You don't want to be in the bonus with uh, six minutes to go. Definitely don't. <laughs> And I feel like this can be a very close game as well, so it will come down to those the three throws or those um, team fouls at the end, towards the end of the game. Yeah, you're right. And I think it's a, you get that sense, don't you, when they, they come out, there's, there's energy on both sides, as we yeah. say. It's where the, with an eight-man rotation, you can keep that going for 40 minutes. Yeah. Rodriguez. And around, nice hustle move from him. Oh, nice Reverse, finish. yeah, great finish off the window. Rivera Rodriguez. And like you said, Shanice, three team oh, fouls. We need to um, need to maintain a bit of discipline. Yeah. I tell you what, Doncaster are getting some good looks. The shots just not dropping for them right now. Gregor and around the perimeter. Doesn't go this time. Rob Martin's there to collect it off the ironwork. Great defense there. Good work from Baltianu. Little Euro step off the window, no good. But Martin to Marston to Alexander now, Alexander. Triple doesn't fall. Short. Up. Walker's there. Walker's doing a good job of tidying up at the moment. I agree, yeah, definitely. Little scrappy balls yeah, down low. Rodriguez. Steps back. Lost two. Steps back. Long range from the top. From Ivan Rodriguez. Doesn't go, live or die by the three. Sante, beautiful nice. dish. Walker with the dagger. Timeout and timeout called. called. Unsurprisingly, Walls out to an 11 3 lead. And he's picked the bones out of that opening exchange for us. Honestly, I feel like Worcester are doing a great job in regards to running the floor. They're pushing the ball, they're not just walking the ball up. And I think their aim is to try and tire out Doncaster. Um, but I believe Doncaster are a very intelligent team. You can see by how they play that, that everyone knows their role. Yeah. Um, as you can see, like, number nine, he's just shooting the lights out of the ball because he knows at some point it's going to drop. So I feel like they're just believing in having that confidence in their each individual, to be honest. Yeah, I guess the question is when you start to get forced into an outside game, it's always such a risky strategy, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've put up, we've got no stats, but we know they've, they've shot about four or five, you know, from, uh, from downtown. It's always, it's always a story, isn't it? You've got to connect. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think it's with these now, my question is, like, are they still going to live and die by that three, or are they going to try and create something different and use their big as a presence? Because they haven't quite done that yet. They've used the screen, but the seven being net really has been done from the perimeter. It has just been the three-point shot. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas Worcester have been moving the ball around quite well, getting it inside and back out, getting some great looks. It'll be interesting to see what happens now. Well, Sam Spate in for... Uh in for uh, Doncaster. So Dean Blake, the happier of the two coaches right now, for sure. I agree with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> Eight point game. So Alexander now for Doncaster. Then he gets his pocket picked by Lucas McGregor. This time Marsden muscles his way inside. Can't finish, can't hold on to the ball. See, they're trying to do something different now. Rodriguez with the triple. This time doesn't go. We held our fire there because it could have gone in. It could have, yeah. <laughs> Marsden. Long range two. Doesn't go. Paul Walsh unable to collect the uh, collect the rebound. So Lucas McGregor. McGregor the the sinks another one, two from two from downtown for Lucas McGregor. Spate in the corner. 
Travel there possibly. Alexander had to take the shot. Tough shot. Deep in the shot clock. That's a very, very tough shot to take. 11 point game, 428 to play. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? You just know there's two or three seconds. You're moving the ball around like dirty money. Yeah. You know, and uh, if it goes, you're a hero, right? <laughs> Who's going to be a hero today? That's You're my a hero or a zero. Well, at the moment, it's <laughs> hard to say. I think we've got a, if a hero emerges, it'll be in, uh, it'll be for Doncaster. At the moment, I would say. Yeah, struggling to get any. McGregor for another treble. He hits another one. Lucas McGregor. He's on fire. He is on fire today. 14-point ball game now. Marsden. Under Rob Marsden. Walsh inside to Marsden. Turns, goes. Marsden. Blocked by Baltiano. That's going to be his second foul. Uh, foul ball against number 10, Matai Walsden. And you said it, didn't you, you know? Yeah, I'm on 14 fouls already. And that first Tom one was a, was a cheap foul. So Tom Grayling. Rob Marsden to the line. Let's give a check in. Serve. You know what to do. Yeah, I think that first foul was a bit of a tough break for him, really, you know. Yeah, I agree. He didn't intend for that to happen, but, <laughs> you know, he made the contact, and uh, that maybe gives uh, maybe gives Doncaster a bit of breathing space now. I agree, yeah. And just mean as well, when he comes back on, he'll have to play a lot smarter. Yeah, when you get to four, there's always a danger it saps that defensive energy. You, you take less risks. I agree, yeah, definitely. Know. And, uh, foul four. So, Carl Alexander, that was a 50 50. It's a question of an inch, really, to steal the ball or not. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. to McGregor. Rodriguez, he goes to Grayling. Sante. Yeah, Sante joins a three point party, doesn't go. In and out, Rob Marsden just picks it off the ironwork. Rob Marsden is going to go inside. Here comes the hook over the top. On the shot clock. Marsden muscles his way inside. You kind of get the sense Doncaster's a little bit frantic under the basket. Yeah, I think I think they are, but I think they're just trying to draw the fouls. I think that's how they know they can win this game. They're both very physical. Yeah. And as you can see, like we're already on five team fouls. There's still three minutes left to go. Anything, any cheap foul now, they can gain two points from. And they've got four to give, of course. So, oh, well, yeah. three, three to give. So Walker. Marsden to the line for two. Worcester, you know what to do. Takes a breather. Dawoodi checks in for Walls. Rob Marston, the veteran on the line. Worcester, we can be loud on that. Come on. Marston, of course, the captain for, uh, for Doncaster. Ten point ball game. Saturday points break. I do think that's going to be a key Brilliant. point for Doncaster as well to make sure they're knocking down the free throws. Absolutely, that is one stat you need to you need to nail in a game like this, Sante. particularly when you're so short. Oh, Sante tried it. He <laughs> tried. <laughs> it was a good idea. <laughs> Didn't quite work. <laughs> that's right. I bowled the pasta. I forgot the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So another foul, just as he said, he called it. So back on the line. So rules in the bonus, and uh, that sends Doncaster back to the line. Carl Alexander on the stripe. He's got to make them both. And, 
a good crowd in here tonight. It's a very good crowd. Almost, a, almost full up. You never know, they might pull the bleachers out behind us later in the season if it uh, uh, keeps going that way. I agree. Um, it would be very good for the team. I think it gives some confidence as well. Well, we know one thing, don't we, about this arena. When it is full, it is a tough place to come and play. It is. You know, it can be quite intimidating for players that haven't played in an arena like this. When you're on the road. Sante. Wolfrey Sante. Good take. Yeah. Inhales the defence. It's going to go, or you're going to the line, and it's the latter for Wolf Sante. He's been a real impact player for Worcester. Last season, particularly, he was. Uh, he's earned that starting spot, I think. Yeah, I, I completely yeah. agree. I think later last season he was beginning to start a few games. But, uh, you know, he came on and you could immediately see the impact that yeah. he had. Yeah. It's like a completely different energy when he's on court. Completely, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, strokes the second of those two. Keeps it at a 10 point game. I think that was essential for Worcester to make sure they maintain that lead as well. He had to knock those two down. Out of bounds. Zach Wally. Steps out of bounds. The sub's coming now for Worcester as well. Sante McGregor. At the top has got Alexander to deal with. Good work from Tom Grayling. McGregor three. Three. space a bit short on that one. Great pass from Marsden into the corner. Spate for three. Too much on it. Davudi plucks it off the ironmongery. Goes to Sante. Sante cross court to McGregor. McGregor with a fade away. No good. Doing a great job on both ends of the floor at the moment. They're creating some great looks on the offensive end. Spate high off the window. Good work from him. That's a very tough take. Eight point ball game. McGregor screaming for the ball. You could see the space. Nice dish. Yeah, that's a great oh. dish, Rodriguez. Belted in the contact. The thing is, they can afford to give that foul at the moment, or it's only on two. Yeah, as like we said, if you've got three to give, you can be that bit more aggressive. Yeah. Wolves have got to be careful at the other end. Yeah, definitely. They have to be a lot more disciplined on the defensive end of the court. Rodriguez on the line to shoot the first of his uh, free throws. Another great role player for Worcester. Watch its feet, but it goes in. 39.4 seconds. In the first quarter, it's been played at such a pace, this game. It's just yeah. <laughs> got, by a, got by in a flash, really. So, Rodriguez set down. Louder. Peterson, oh, Jacob Dearman in for Worcester. Inside, with the Grayling hands it off to uh, Lucas McGregor. Here comes the cavalry. Peterman, he gets his pocket picked at the other end. So shot clock turned off. 14 seconds now on the game clock. Alexander just going to run as much of that clock as he can. They definitely want to get that last shot off. Spike for three, and it goes in. Goodness me. At the end of the first quarter, Well, that was a hero shot from, uh, from Sam Spate right at the end. I the agree. death of the first quarter. And uh, what's your wrap up on that quarter, Shanice? I mean, they brought it back down. Like, there was almost 10 points in it, and now there's only seven. So they've definitely brought it back. 
I think the energy on both sides was very intense. I think it's going to be a really good game, if I'm being honest. I think maybe Worcester uh, just got to keep a level of intensity going. Cause, uh, it is, I, I just feel it's going to be a war of attrition. I, I you agree. know, with that rotation, you, you, you know, you need to tire out your opponents, and equally on the other side, you need you need your smarts with you because you just don't have the depth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they are a very intelligent team as well, so they need to utilise that. Yeah. Discipline, I mean, three fouls in that quarter. So they're having to tiptoe their way around the key. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And yeah, that's a factor, isn't it? When you've only got eight, you get towards you know, the latter stage of the game, third quarter in particular. You start to have racked quite a lot of fouls up on the board, and you may have only got one true big man yeah. in the roster. If he's in trouble, you, you're all in trouble. Yeah, definitely. You know. I think with that, though, we'll have to be very careful. As you said, they're already on three fouls, and as it might not seem a lot, when you've only got eight players, they yeah. can wrap up quite easily. Yeah. So. I think, as you said, you know, down the stretch, it's really where we're probably going to see this one play out. We've got the stats from the first quarter. You see, we did get stats. They do run across the court. It's quite interesting. Well, it's going to be Lucas, isn't it? I think, looking down the... Uh, McGregor, his nine points all coming from behind the arc. Marsden, Marcel Bound with six. I'll let you pick the bones out of the, uh, out of the stats. 21-14 it is as we head into the uh, second quarter. And of course, a shout out to the sponsors, as we always do, University of Worcester, Universal Display, Aston's Coaches, Spirit Executive, Something Party, Spirit Care, Spirit Events and Synergy Sports. And of course, our league sponsors, Wilson Dynamic Sports Serve and Sure Shot, without whom much of what we uh, enjoy wouldn't happen. Rob Marsden, the veteran, gets us back underway. Defense. Louder. Defense. Alexander. Making a real nuisance of himself. Straight pulls up. That does it go. Three. Three. Uh, yes, yeah, Spate, he likes that spot on the floor. He must have shot half a dozen from there so far <laughs> yeah. in the game, you know. I think that must be a shot. It's just not dropping right now. And as a shooter, you do have to keep shooting them, regardless of the outcome, if that is your role. Absolutely. Unless you get crowded out, which is what we saw with Marquez earlier today. Completely crowded out of the game, you know, to yeah. the volume scorer, so... That was very nearly a great finish. Very nearly. <laughs> McGregor. I'll tell you what, offensively, Doncaster have picked up the pace. Yeah. The, uh, great ball movement from Worcester around the perimeter. McGregor. McGregor finds his way through, fouled. So is that going to be on Marsden? Yeah, that's on Spate. Sam Spate. First foul of the game for him. Sam so Spate and Alexander checking out of the game, and Alexander Root back in, as does uh, Paul Walsh. Uh, subs for Worcester. Isaiah Walker. Back in, McGregor taking a breather. Lucas uh, McGregor carrying one foul in the game so far. 904 to play in the second quarter of this ball game. NBL Division 2 North. So, route over the timeline for Doncaster. Seven points of difference. So, it's pretty locked up right now. Uh, bounce dish to uh, Marsden didn't work. Worcester all over it. Tom Grayling. Yeah. Moody to Walker. Moody with the spin. Walker. to Walker outside. Dishes back out. Moody for three. Moody drains the triple. 
I was just about to say it was good defensive work, I think, from Doncaster there. Very good defensive work, but I guess it's good defense, it's just a great offensive shot. Forced the outside shot, there was no way in really, another triple coming from the corner, but off the back of the backboard. So, Wolves ball, 10 points the difference. Jacob Dearman to Walker. Great. Oh, Grayling. Got to find someone. Walker with the triple. Worcester are on fire from behind the arc. Stretches it out to the 13th point ball game in favour of the Wolves. Root. One in. I think we'll circle into a zone. It's a question of and another triple. Welcome to the Worcester Three Point Festival, folks. <laughs> it is raining triples here. Ten points the difference. You said it should be. It's going to be a great game, right? It really <laughs> is. Damon goes inside to Grayling, to Davoudi. Peterson inside. Grayling just does the simple stuff. Tell you what, that was great ball movement from Worcester Wolves there. Tom Grayling, very mature head on that shoulders. No need to showboat, just, just get the points. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be foul. So, Jacob Dearman picks up two fouls. There's a bit of a Christmas tree developing on that side of the scoreboard, isn't there? <laughs> they want to make a pretty pattern, don't yeah, they? <laughs> doing a great job right now, I think. <laughs> Alexander puts up the triple this time. So Davoudi goes to Deerman. and Deerman has just picked up another foul. Two for him so far in the game. Davoudi's dancing around the top, drives hard inside. Oh, what a finish! Arian Davoudi off the window, danced his way through the defence. Defence! Louder! Louder! Defense. Crowd enjoying it here, stolen away Davoudi. once again, Tom Grayling. Davoudi. Davoudi. Oh, opted to go for the points. Too much on that outlet. Walsh. Walsh now for three. Doesn't go and uh, stolen away again. Euro step inside, find two points. Scoreboard starting to look a bit more challenging for it Doncaster is. at the moment. Yeah. There again, it's only 12 points. That's six. It looks worse than it is. Yeah, definitely. It does something to your head though, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> oh, oh, nice work. Isaiah Walker punishing Doncaster <laughs> for that mistake. I agree. Wow. It's a game, isn't it? It's a game. <laughs> Tell you what, Doncaster aren't holding off though. They've been down, but they're still bringing the energy both offensively and defensively. 14 points, I mean, it's not a mountain, but it's a steep hill. I, I, yeah? yeah. You know, I think you've got to, you've got to, You've got to give it to them. You know they're bringing that defensive energy down there, and they're forcing a lot of outside shots. Yeah. You know, so Worcester are struggling, have been struggling to get inside really in the first five minutes of this half, uh, oh, but of this quarter. But uh, you know, you look at the scoreboard. I think if I were Dean Blake, I'd probably be more concerned about the foul count right now. It's starting yeah. to, you know, to wind up. Not too much to, uh, not too much to bother Coach Andrew Wally at the moment. But uh, what's the lead here? 33 points to 19. NBL Division 2 North men's. And uh, as we said at the top, Doncaster finishing third in the league last season. So they were one of the uh, powerhouse teams in the league, led by Rob Marsden. Who's a player who's been around the block, let's face it. You know. So someone who knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> 5.32 to go until half time. Can Doncaster find a way just to chip away at this lead? 
They've got the shooters. Like you said, Shanice, you know, that spot there, Alexander shooting those three. Um, the Sam Spate rather shooting those three from the, from the top there. But you've got to get them to drop. Get in your pocket, picked ain't going to help. So Jacob Solverson checked in. Tell you what, Worcester are doing a great job anticipating on that ball movement there. Yeah, move, movement off the ball, we often forget it's as important as movement on it, you know. <laughs> so Moody managed to keep hold of it. Wilfred Sante, on the other hand, laid an egg. That's gone out of bounds. So Tom has to breathe again. 14 points, the difference. Marston, he's a big old. On the pick and roll, beautiful work. Oh, Veteran yeah. move from Rob Marston. That was beautiful. Two steps off the pick and roll, smooth as you like. Peterson. Solverson. Solverson. His father, of course, uh, Rick Solverson. Oh, my goodness me, it's another one wide open shot there as well. What's the hitting? 37 and a half percent from three point range oh, in that first quarter. Well, they're going to be, be interesting to see at half time. Where that ends up and everyone's getting in on the party. Let's see if uh, Wolf Sante wants to have a go as well. Now we go to Solverson in the corner. In and out this time doesn't go. Sante can't get his hands to the ball. Ruth. Hodgson to Marston. 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 Walker doing a great job. Good defence from Worcester, but uh, they draw the contact. Doncaster. So, Arian Davoudi with his first foul of the game. And, uh, Dean Blake. Let's have a conversation. Honestly, I feel like Doncaster are drawing a lot of fouls now, so maybe telling them to keep their hands out, especially when they get into the rim, because they are bringing in a lot of free throw points. And I think that's how they've been keeping the game. Yeah. It's by knocking them free throws down. So if you're um, Coach Wally right now, what are you what are you saying in that huddle? Just keep going to the rack, because they're not the people that can't guard it at the moment, or else they wouldn't have been on that many free throws. But yeah, definitely like just keep driving, getting the ball inside. I think that's working for him for them. And then when the free point shots start dropping, obviously, yep. just keep shooting them. Well, as it currently stands, if you've just joined us, NBL Division Two Men's North 36, Worcester Wolves lead on their home floor. Doncaster, it's a long old road trip for them today, that's for sure. So they're going to want to go away with a couple of points. Doncaster dropping their first game last weekend and uh, the weekend before, I should say. Worcester taking their uh, opening win of the season a couple of weeks ago. So important for them to maintain that momentum because it's a habit, isn't it? When you start to win, yeah. you feel that confidence in a group. You know what to do. Dean Blake he's certainly got plenty of tools in the uh, at his disposal over there to do some serious damage. You know. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of length on there, isn't there? This is the first. So Tom Hodson can't uh, connect with the first of those two. So Hodson sex for the second. Doesn't make either of them. Walker is there to collect it off the ironwork. Solverson now. Walker. Walker. Peterson just missed time the pass. Yeah. Oh, it's stolen away by Peterson. Thank you very much, says Peterson, lays it in off the window. And uh, 17 points, the lead. So subs coming now. Machak Colondo is checking in. For the first time this afternoon, Walsh will bring. Defense. Louder. 
So Miles did. And again, their pocket picks. So many steals. Jacob Solverson. Oh, beautiful work from Sante. Couldn't finish, but uh, wrong footed the defense. Again, good movement inside. Get the Walsh for three this time. Austin collects it. Finds the two points, and he's going to go to the line to add the bonus. He is, yeah. And like I said, they just need to keep doing that because that's working well for them. 38 plays 23 with 2.46 to go. And once again, four on the board for Worcester. Yeah, once again. As they do need to become really, really disciplined to stay in this game. If they keep getting to five fouls, the Doncaster are just going to keep chipping away and bringing it back into the game. Yeah. Because they're picking up plenty, there's no doubt about that. You know, when they're in, the defence is, the defense is rushing in. You know, Mars has converted that into three, and all of a sudden, doesn't look such a big hill anymore. <laughs> That's one thing I can say Doncaster are doing really well, is they're very disciplined on defence. They're not picking up that many fouls. Solverson hits the triple to redress the balance at the other end of the floor. <laughs> You just couldn't make it up. So your homework at half-time is to get the stats on the streets. <laughs> yeah. Alexander almost loses the handle on the basketball. Alexander Root. There's another one! Goodness me! It is raining. Three-pointers. Unbelievable. Solverson with the teardrop, doesn't go. McGregor, he's going to create the space, fades away. He's got clattered in that contact. Tough shot over the triple team. Root. Came off his foot. Walsh with a mid-range two jumper. Meet and drink. For him. So Alexander picks it up. The timeline for Doncaster. One minute and 12 seconds to play. Worcester on 14 fouls. Doncaster oh, nice again. Yeah, beautiful. Marsden, veteran move. Literally That's great finish. Two or three we've seen from him. You see the value he brings to this team, you know. McGregor almost hits another one in and out. Defense. That's got to be the most frustrating thing as a player, right? Yeah, it definitely is. I can tell you, you that. You think it's home and hose. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Alexander. Root. Overcooks it out of bounds. We know you're something of a specialist from downtown. Pardon? You're a bit of a downtown specialist, so. You know. I'd like to say I am, but <laughs> all right, I'm, on, I'm or not. It's a different story. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen quite a few go in. I've sat here and seen you knock them down one after the other <laughs> for a bit of a laugh, <laughs> for a bit of fun. Yeah, I guess that's some way of putting it. <laughs> so, timeout called with 30 seconds to go. And, uh, yeah, you called it, you know, you said it's going to be that foul count is significant because it's what they're doing well. They seem to have figured that out early on. Yeah. You know, as you said, small rotation is a great way to, it's a great way to rack up a few points and chip away. 17 down to 10. Yeah. Right? You know? So, Dean Blake reorganising something. Let's see what, uh, what he draws up on the board with 31 seconds to play. I guess Doncaster now just want to drop a play to hold on to the ball and uh, yeah. go in below double figures, go in in single digits. I might look for that skill as well to try and get the last shot of the game. We saw, that, we saw that in the women's game, didn't we, earlier on, you know? Yeah. That was 10 points and just before half-time, you know. 
Yeah. Or 11, that was 11 points, wasn't it? They're winning nine at half time, yeah. so, uh, which helps. So, wants to take in an extra second or two to get themselves organised, but uh, back they come. So, 31 and a half seconds in the second quarter. John Castor on the inbound. Alexander drives hard inside. McGregor manages to hold on to it. Great work. 23 seconds to play. So, whatever they drew up, it didn't quite work. McGregor bouncing around like a ping pong ball on the perimeter. I'm guessing they just want to run the clock down. Yeah, just want to use as much as they can. Baltianu back in. Baltianu finds two more. And the foul. Count the third one. He needs to convert it. But, uh, great play from Mate Baltianu. For Worcester. Crowd enjoying this one here this afternoon. Or this evening. I should say. Yeah, it's kind of been here so long, I forgot what time it is. <laughs> so Baltiano, high arcing, form to his shot, the Hail Mary goes up right on the buzzer, and there it is. It is half time here in Worcester, 44 to 31, Worcester Wolves lead on their home floor. So, what's your wrap up on that uh, first I half? I think Worcester doing a great job, they're able to score inside, outside, I think. They're down for defensively, they're racking up too many fouls. But Doncaster are doing great in that aspect, drawing them fouls, giving them a chance to stay in the game. I think without those, they wouldn't be in the game right now. So Doncaster just need to keep trying to get to the rim, keep being energetic, and it's going to be a close game for the fourth quarter. Yeah, because 13 points, as I say, not a mountain, it's, just a, it's a steep hill, but you've got to get those stops and you need to convert. That's the thing. As you say, getting to the line is one thing, converting them all is quite, is quite another, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You know, and with that, Doncaster do need to knock their free throws down. Yeah, it's a funny position, isn't it? Because I think with a score like that, we often say, don't we, games are won or lost in the third quarter. And that's the kind of position, if Wolves come out and really turn the screw, they could bury this game in the, yeah. next, in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, they really could. But they just need to be disciplined in order to do so. Well, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back here in 10 minutes-ish, something like that. Uh, which, by which time uh, Shanice will have worked out how many threes have gone in. <laughs> We're about to get the half-time stats. And uh, we will see you back here for the second half. But before we do that, don't forget to keep up with all the latest news and developments from uh, for Worcester by following all these social media channels, so Facebook, Instagram, etc, etc, etc. All of which I know, but none of which I understand how to use. So, because I'm too old, <laughs> I think that's what it is. And of course, if the kids want to get involved in uh, in the sport, every Saturday morning now, it's uh, Saturday session has started once again up at the uh, St John's campus, St John's Sports Centre, which was uh, the Wall's old stomping ground. Of course, nine to ten sessions for five to seven and eight to eleven year olds, and after that, the sessions from ten fifteen to eleven fifteen is for eleven to sixteen year olds. Five pounds per session if you book in advance, or seven pounds if you pay on the day. Great way to get started in the beautiful game during term time. The first sessions uh, next Saturday, you can book your child's place now on the Worcester Walls website. So just go to uh, worcesterwalls.org, follow the links from there. And uh, don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the notification icon and the bell to make sure that you don't miss any of the news and all the games streamed live here when you can't get to the arena. But of course, you're going to want to buy a season ticket, which will give you your 45% discount of all the games this season, but it also for the playoffs and the cup games should uh, both teams, we're very confident they will, get to those stages of the uh, competition. And don't forget that the online store is open online, of course, that's why it's called an online store. Or you can pop into the arena any time where the uh, Worcester Wolves merchandise store is open, all manner of great things that you've been uh, purchased. Christmas not too far away, and I am informed that this year there will also be fantastic Christmas baubles once again. Uh, could be last year's stock that hasn't gone off, so... Uh, Make sure that you get online and make your purchases in good time. We're going to take a short break. We'll see you. Whatever you do, don't go away.
Welcome back to the University of Worcester Arena. It is uh, MBL Division Two Men North, on, uh, and uh, Worcester Wolves leading here, 44 points to 31. They are hosting the Doncaster Eagles, who are on a long road trip today. Shanice, you've been pouring over the stats at half time. You know, we said it's, you, you made the point about you know Doncaster needing to use the foul line as much as they could. What have you gleaned from that lot? Um, in regards to the foul line, um, we see that Worcester have been scoring 100% from the um, foul line, whereas Doncaster has only scored 72.7%. And I mean, that's eight out of 11 free throws, but them, them free throws are crucial for this team. They need to be able to knock them down. And especially when Worcester are knocking those down, they have to be able to stay on the same level as them. Yeah, and also doing quite a good job. We were looking at the stats earlier on, you know, the second chance points, that what I was always call the tidying up the mess points when it goes wrong, and they're finding a way to do that. We also haven't, haven't had any, no second chance looks at all. No, they haven't, and if their shots do stop dropping at some point, I think that can be a big thing yep. for Worcester, and it could make the game turn around. And just in, yeah, it's exactly as you said, 50% from the field for Worcester, 37, 35 for, 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 uh, for Doncaster, which is kind of testament to the fact that they've got, you know, they're, they're using the foul line a bit more. Having said which, Lucas McGregor hangs in the air to find an opening too. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. We were saying as well, weren't we? You know, only four players on the, of the eight, only half of their players have scored despite all having played. Worcester have got nine players on the score sheet right now. And Rob Marsden's a bit of a one-man army. Yeah, you know? definitely. I'll tell you what, he, he does a lot for this team. And there he is again. And again in the board. And that's the second chance that didn't go. It stays at five. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was there and at some point was going to be take that away because he is oh. great well, in the paint. The bank is open for Lucas McGregor. So we'll see if Worcester can do one of those great third quarter demolition jobs and just bury, put the game away early. You sense that Doncaster are going to go nowhere, but uh, Sante's there just to pick up from that mistake. Can't finish. Alexander off the window. He goes to Marsden. Marsden's just got to do the simple stuff, which he duly delivers. He was looking for the foul there, but uh, the referee was having none of it. Has gone, so. Tom the Holding foul, Eagles. Tom Hodson, second foul of the game for him. And, uh, I think it's the first time we've seen more fouls on the board for Doncaster than for Wolves in this game, isn't it? Yeah. I know it's only one, but you know, <laughs> it's got to start somewhere, right? McGregor. And McGregor, stop and go. Really loses the handle on the ball. Oh, nice oh. Kick. oh my goodness me, Isaiah Walker. Ice in his veins from downtown tonight. Honestly, that was some beautiful basketball right there. Alexander 
That's it goes to Alexander. Alexander puts up three from deep. That's going to be the Wolves ball. Just off Paul Walsh. It's interesting, Paul Walsh is saying, calm it down. There's always a danger when you're behind, you overplay yeah. every possession a little bit, you know. Rodriguez. It goes up, but it doesn't go in. Oh, nice finish. Oh, that oh, was a great finish. Great work from Rob Marsden. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, offensive ball. Offensive so, foul. Well, they called the foul. Yeah, offensive okay. foul. Still a great finish. It was a great finish. <laughs> Still a great finish. Take nothing away <laughs> from Rob Marsden. That was a great finish. 51, plays 33, 7.43 to play in the third quarter of this ball game. And uh, Doncaster not able to get their noses in front. Wolf Sante switches on the afterburners to get over the timeline. There's a nice uh, bounce into McGregor. Lucas McGregor. Oh, oh nice beautiful dish to Baltiano who finishes it off the glass. That was a tough finish. Two defenders on him right under the basket. I'll tell you what, some great basketball being played here today. Alex on the route. Oh. Oh, Walsh dancing around. But he lacks in height, he makes up for his foot speed. <laughs> Alexander. Going to get his pocket pick, no, John Ball, who has the arrow, we can't quite see it from here. The Eagles have the arrow, so... Eagles possession. The referees letting that game flow, has to be said. Another big board there. Yeah, huge board, he gets a 14 reset, can he hold on to it? Walsh into Marsden. Six on the shot clock. They've got to get something away here. Alexander just about gets it away, Walsh. It's always such a tough shot. Shot clock violation. No shot clock violation. Yeah, I think Marsden thought he'd taken that off the ironwork. Yeah. And the referee saying it didn't touch the rim, so it's a Walsh possession. That's very frustrating. <laughs> Particularly yeah. where he was, because depending on where the ball comes down, you may have thought it touched, you know? Yeah. So, 24 seconds, and off we go with another offence. Wilfred Sante. Mr. Baltianu. Walker. Been an impressive player, Walker, in pre-season as well. This year. That reverse off the window. The Baltianu trademark shot. Alexander. The range two doesn't go. Lucas McGregor. Nice back door. Rodriguez just can't finish off the window. Hudson. 20 points the difference now. I'll tell you what, some great basketball on both yeah. ends of the floor. Oh, oh, goodness me. What a finish. Tom Hodson showing some handles. I tell you what, I don't think Dean would be very happy about that, going straight down the middle of the floor, coast to coast. Walker. Spate is in, as is Tom Grayling for Worcester. Sam Spate. Wasn't frightened to take those uh, threes. Doncaster hitting nine points from downtown in that first half. I do need to make their three throws. Yeah, it's going to be crucial. Oh, goodness me, that's a great finish. He makes it look simple, but uh, that shot in motion. Root. Oh. Superb finish from him. There's this furious pace to this game. It's like they've just uh, they've just had the opening tip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Baltianu 
Good to muscle his way inside, Rodriguez. Oh, great dish to Grayling. He's fouled. I'll tell you what, there is some great basketball going on right here. Uh, Rob Marston on two fouls. So, Tyler Lizia is checking in, and uh, Hodson takes a breather. He's put in a bit of a shift, uh, Tom Hodson. So, Davudi, you saw some great stuff from him in the first quarter. Yeah, definitely. Very athletic, uh, athletic shooting guard. Tom Grayley. Doesn't make the first of those two. Really? Sweet as you like with the second. So 19 is the difference now. Spate. That was a poor pass, really. I'll tell you what. Doncaster really need to look after the ball now. We need to make every offense count. Yeah, you kind of sense that if we're to go in sort of 20, 25 at the end of this quarter, it's, it's going to be a real tall order to come back from that. Yeah. And I think they know that. I'm sure that, you know, Dean Blake at halftime would have said to them, you've got to bury this now. Yeah. Now's your chance, you know. Because you look at that foul count and, you know, they can, they can work those fouls in the fourth quarter. But, you know, if you're working those fouls from a 20-odd, 25-point deficit, it's one thing. Yeah. If you're working those fouls from 10, yeah. you've got a real chance to win the game. Oh. Wolf Sante drives inside. It's Grayling. A bit disjointed, but he goes to Sante for the triple. Doesn't go. Davudi can't hang on to it. Walsh. Walsh. Spate into Marston. Marston dishes it back into Spate. Spate can't finish, and uh, Lucas McGregor is there. The Voodie for the triple. Doesn't go. Root as it's stolen away by Sante. Off the glass, Wolf Sante. Wolves are uh, really spreading their wings now. Bit of, bit of fatigue creeping in, I sense, for uh, Doncaster at the moment. Yeah, I agree. They're just looking a bit tired. Like you said, stamina. You know? Yeah, and I think that's what Worcester wanted. Worcester wanted them to get tired in the third. When it comes to the fourth, they could literally just pull away. Make him run like an evil coach, right? Yeah. <laughs> Today you're running. We've all been there. <laughs> so Dearman checks in for Sante and uh, Spate. Spate. Lid on the basket at the moment for uh, for Doncaster. 58, 37, 21 points. Lucas McGregor. Oh, good. Really. Oh, no! I oh, finish. Gets his rebound. And this time he gets it to go. I mean, Doncaster did really hard work there defensively. But um, Lucas to shoot a contested shot and then just couldn't clear a glass. The triple. Grayling. Looking for the point guard. <laughs> Gregor to Baltianu. was there Spade. just to Defense. make a mess of it. Louder. So Louder. Walsh. Oh, Walsh. Beautiful shot from him. That was lovely. Great ball movement from Worcester, Baltianu says not in my house, drops it in off the window, 2.21 to play in the third quarter, Wolves lead now 62 points to 39 and they are at the races right now. 
Hodson at the other end. Finds another two for Doncaster. Doncaster struggling to get the lead under 20 at the moment. Tiani goes to Davudi. Davudi. If that had come a bit quicker, he'd have been wide open for a triple. Puts up the circus shot. No good. Just couldn't hold on to it. Lucas so Zach Wally is going to check in as uh, Alexander Root checks out. Yeah, Root looks uh, he looks pretty shot at the moment. Has to be said. It's a long old game with an eight-man rotation, isn't it? Rodriguez, Grayling. Grayling. Grayling drives in hard off the window. And he is going to go to the line to add the bonus. Great work from uh, Doncaster in defence, but it's, uh, it's not holding at the moment. Worcester are punishing them for every mistake. They are. So Tom Grayling on the line. This time, picture perfect. Tom Groening with 125 to go in the third quarter of this ball game. It has been all Worcester for the last three or four minutes. To Lisler, to Spate. It's picked off by Dearman. Nice dumps. Pass. Yeah, it's great. Oh. Davudi couldn't finish, but it's a beautiful dish. Well worked move. Worcester, they're playing with real freedom at the moment. Hodson. Hodson. Grayling just got a finger to it. Wally puts up the triple. Doesn't go in and out. Just nothing falling for Doncaster at the moment. 24 points the lead. Jacob Solverson goes into Grayling. That was just too easy for Tom Grayling, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Grayling using every inch of the height that God gave him. The defensive cry goes up from the crowd. Big crowd in here in Worcester today. Great to see them back after the last couple of years. Hodson drives inside, shot put violation. Great defence from Worcester Wolves. And they are earning every point. So, 1.2 seconds. So, it's going to be a Hail Mary. There it is. It's going nowhere. Wow. Catch your breath. Literally. <laughs> you did say, didn't you? Some great basketball being played at both ends of the floor, and you know. But you kind of just—I just got the sense, Doncaster, they're tiring. They're finding yeah. it hard. You can see by the foul count, they're on four yeah. fouls, and Worcester are on two at the moment. And I think that was a big adjustment that Worcester needed to make yeah. um, to make sure they didn't get back in the game, is to make sure they were disciplined on defense. And because of that, it shows on the scoreboard. Doncaster haven't been able to get to the free throw line, which just means that they're now that, that 10 or 5 to 10 points behind. Yeah, we'll scoring quite freely in that, you know, in that quarter for the last five minutes of that quarter. That you know, so I think that is part of the, the fatigue on, on defence. It's hard to keep that energy up, you know. Yeah. Then your foul count gets to three and you're, you're slightly neutralised or a little bit, you know, in defence. There's always that nervousness, you know, to take that extra step, to, you know, to jump in on the double team for fear of reaching or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden, with a deficit like that, then you're in really big trouble. Yeah. You know, so, uh, well, we'll see. It's uh, 26 points, the difference in this game. And I think, as we said, didn't we, if you're battling... If you're working that those fouls from the line at 25, 26, it's a uh, it's not impossible, but it's bloody hard. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely. know. Excuse my industrial language, but you know what I mean. 
So what have Doncaster got in this fourth quarter? The walls are straight back on the floor and uh, no question about it. It's been uh, something of a demolition job in that third quarter. Doncaster, they need to buckle down now and claw their way back into this game. Well, they've got 10 minutes to do something. As Jacob Dearman gets us back on the way. Grayling. You go left or right, he goes to Rodriguez. Rodriguez just pulls up at the top of the key. Paul oh, Walsh, good work from Rodriguez there. Transition defense. It's gone out of bounds off the foot, says the referee, so it's going to be sideline possession. To Doncaster. Can't get it to drop. Graham Davoudi picks the pass off, drives inside. That was a beautiful finish from him. There's another one. That's Add it to your list. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Worcester have gone into a 2 3 zone now, so they thought that they couldn't hit their shots, and I think that's just gone to show that they can actually make the three. Exactly. Force them to shoot over the top. And, yeah. uh, oh, dear, but that to the finger roll. Stole it. Straight to the bucket. Route one. And I think that means every player on Worcester are now on the score sheet. Uh, yeah, first points of the game for uh, for Dearman. And now it's a foot race. Dearman wins it. Can he find the points? He doesn't, but the booty's there. One feature of this Worcester roster this year, they're very unselfish with the ball. They, they stretch the floor, they spread the ball around. I think that's a key element for Worcester is giving up the good for great shots. And, uh, well, that was perhaps uh, not the best decision of the day from <laughs> Jacob Dearman. <laughs> I mean, he's a hustler, so what can you say? <laughs> well, he is, yeah. yeah. I think the, the, the sort of the Irish dancing lesson probably wasn't needed. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not river dance, Jacob. Calm down. <laughs> So, Sam Spate on the line. Goodness me, there's nothing dropping. It's just one of those. You get periods in a game where nothing goes. And you said it, didn't you? You can yeah. get to the line, but you've got to make these shots. With that kind of deficit, he hits a second. Grayling. Grayling Marsden show at the moment. Rodriguez. It's inside. Beautiful finish from Rodriguez. That was a good pass. That was a really good pass inside. Beautiful ball movement. Walsh wide open for three. Can't get it to go. Marsden is there. Marsden is really looking. He's looking tired. 7.16 to go. It's quite a long time. So, Wolf Sante into the game. Manos, uh, Calabas. Brown, got his first look at the ball. So, 
So uh, we must need Canavas to score to get everybody on the sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Rodriguez on the line, 30 points, and uh, that's hard work. It is. Very hard work. 30 points in six minutes. We've seen it done. It has been done. But at this level, you sense it's going to be now a war of attrition to the end. Worcester playing with great freedom now. If they can just continue to keep their foot on the gas. Could be a big old score. Defense. Now then. Paul Alexander. Alexander. Root. Root. There, balls it. Calabas finds Sante. 15 of those points. the board for Doncaster It'll come from the hand of Rob Marsden Sensei collects his own rebound twice Solverson for three doesn't go Alexander this time the bank is closed Marsden again can't finish he's so frustrated under the basket and uh, I think Graining got a Elbow to the head. Yeah, I'm not quite right. sure what happened there. I thought maybe. We'll see. Uh, we have a VAR system here, but it's about a minute behind, so. Uh. <laughs> you might get to see it. We don't know. We will check for you, dear viewer. Obviously, we'll we'll see. But, uh, actually, I don't know. He sort of maybe pulled a muscle. Just kind of went down. Um, yeah. Okay. As the ball went over his head, I think. Yeah, possibly. It's just strictly. Yeah, it looks like he's strained a muscle in his neck. So. Defense. So yeah. Root into our oh, Marston just couldn't hang on to it. Kick balls as a referee. So. Doncaster have it. Just went through the hands of Marston. Six minutes to play, 77 plays 45. Walsh Worcester three. looking comfortable. Walsh can't connect with that triple. Rodriguez is there to collect it off the ironwork. Wolf sends it. Oh, what a beautiful pass to find Calavis in the corner for three. Airballs it into the hands of Marsden. Another triple attempt at the other end. Panos Cavalas is there to collect it. Sante, Solverson for three! Jacob Solverson nails another one from the corner. And Worcester are at 80. I mean, it's going to be very, very tough for Doncaster to try and catch up now. Well, I think now you've, you know, you're scoring for points difference, really. Yeah. You know, so like you said at the top, you know, it's, it's, they're all important. Every offense counts. Yeah. Even when you're up against it like this, but uh, yeah, Worcester really showing their uh, showing their depth today. That is for sure. So Dean Blake has called a timeout. That's interesting. Very interesting. It's a rueful smile on your face. <laughs> to explain. I, I'm not, if I'm being honest, I'm not quite sure why he has called the timeout. Um, I think that the offensively, we're so moving the ball, they're creating great open looks. Um, defensively, they've stopped them trying to go down middle. And they haven't really given that many second chance points. And they've been very disciplined. They haven't been fouling One them foul. much. Um, so I, in regards to Worcester from looking from the second quarter to now, I think they have made them adaptations and yeah. changes, and that's why they have brought the lead. In his mind, is he saying, keep them below 50 and let's try and get to 100? Probably most likely, no, indeed. <laughs> 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 so 
tell you what, it, he's a great coach, but he makes sure that his players don't, don't get complacent. Yeah. Um, make sure they hold themselves to that level because they have they have a point to prove. They're a very young team. Um, so I think they're trying to make a statement in regards to being in this league. Yeah, I did an interview with, with Dean at the start of the uh, at the start of the season. It's interesting. One of the things he said was precisely that there's no let up because you come from, you know, Division Three, which they breeze through pretty much yeah. you know and he said if you then come into that with the complacency of thinking you're going to do exactly the same thing such a massive step up in level and we saw that against Birmingham didn't oh, we yeah we did you know the Birmingham game you, you saw there was a there was a mismatch really yeah. in, in, in lots of areas in that game and uh, and I think in a way it served his, his his style quite well for them to be faced with that yeah. that early in the season yeah definitely. you know because if you look at the league now birmingham are, are away with i think it's an 80 points difference or something at the top now so clearly going to be there and thereabouts come the end of the season meantime jacob solverson hits another two jacob whose uh, father was one of the legends rick solverson of this organization and uh, he's been up through the uh, organization was the bears Homegrown talent here in Worcester. We do love to see that, don't we? <laughs> We'd love to see a bit of homegrown talent, absolutely. Spate can't get it to go. He's got another chance now. Great passes there. Good ball movement, yeah, great ball movement. Well, they deserve a couple of points here. And there is Rob Marsden. I mean, after that pass, he had to score that, didn't he? <laughs> that would be a head drop moment if you didn't make anything out of that, you know. 4.04 to play, long way to go in the game. Altianu from Martin always does a great job, gets himself basket side in a situation like that. And, uh, so Sam Spate, three fouls on the board. You can tell they're getting tired now, their hands are on hips and yeah. they're just not moving the way they were in the first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. It's also keeping your head up, isn't it? You know, Solverson, almost another one. It is, and that can be really hard to do when the lead's this high. Yeah. Marsden. Not finding his way in this time. It's uh, Balsianu. Collects the foul, which will be his third. So Rob Marsden, a chance to take this to 49 for Doncaster. It would look better if it had a five in front of it, their score. <laughs> you sense, you know. Well, they've got plenty of time. Marsden drains the first of those two. Doesn't make the second. Ron Iron. Sante. And, uh, nice cut. Yeah. That was a superb pass inside. Defense. Louder. Caster not giving up. Spate for again. Sam Spate hits a triple down the stretch. Two minutes, 58 seconds to play. Rodriguez. This is Solverson. Solverson stop and go. Lovely. Beautiful. Well sent eight in the corner. Didn't even look up. No, literally, it's <laughs> some great basketball movement there. Marsden. Marsden. Great finish. Yeah, spin move, and uh, they get over the 50. 85 plays 50, and it'll do wonders for Worcester's uh, points difference. Jacob Solverson just strings his way inside. Had a little bit of sauce on that finish. A little bit, a <laughs> little bit. He had both components of the dish that time. Yeah. <laughs> Rodriguez couldn't hold on to it, Marsden. After all that hard work to save it. 
So Peterson checks in. Solverson takes a breather. Solverson had a good game today. So Walsh and Lisler in. And Sam Spate Root head back to the bench. So many rotational options for Coach Dean Blake on this uh, on this roster. There is. Good defence, great defence from Worcester. And you, you sense, you know, whatever rotation you put in, it's not like there's one player who's the impact guy. Yeah. You know, there there are several on this team. In fact, they're all they're all contributing. Yeah. You know, so once you've worked out those sets of five that you, you kind of like and those matchups that you, that you like, you, you can be pretty comfortable, can't you, as a coach, just rotating those in and out? Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. And like you said, there are numerous of them on. Worcester, so yeah, so often you get that in a you know, in a t it's funny. We, was, we were talking about again, we were referring back to the, the, the women's game because she used to play for them. But <laughs> you know, we were saying today with Shona Williams when she came in, what the difference that she made to the team every time yeah. she was on the floor. And we were scratching our heads as to why she didn't feature more in that fourth quarter of the yeah. game today. You know, that's a great example where you've got somebody who comes in, they immediately make they do something to the dynamic of the team. Whereas Dean Blake, he just seems to have this this, this box of tricks. Yeah. You know, no matter what, no matter what he does, you know, he always comes up with a card. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Alexander at the top. Doncaster still moving the ball really well. Marsden. Another shot clock violation. Great defence again. It is two shot clock violations in a row now. Yeah. Inside the last minute, 57.2 seconds remain on the game clock. Altiano. So, Alexander, second foul of the game for him, 48.7 seconds to play. So, uh, not much point getting into the foul game. There's not much at this <laughs> point, is there? It's not really going to do anything for you, but... Sometimes it's instinctive, I think, you know. I think Doncaster's now gone into a 2 3 zone. Palavas trying to join the three-point party. Yeah. It's a finish. Yeah, Walsh can't quite get it to go. So, Paul Walsh on the line. Just to wind up their side of the scoreboard. You know what to do. So, Paul Walsh. Doncaster. Nice kick. Full string. Doncaster just not managing to get their noses in front at all in this game. No. But uh, first half, kind of touch and go, really. I think a big part of that was that eight player rotation. Like, Dean's nice to have 12 players and he can yeah. use all 12 and he has the depth. People can take a breather. Absolutely. And that's the result. <laughs> and that's quite interesting because he looked over at Coasty Blake and I just dribbled away. He went, no, go play, play, go get another two. Yeah. <laughs> you know. End of the game. Well, if it ended with a three, it would have been prophetic, I think, based on what yeah. we've seen, <laughs> what we've seen today. But there it is. That's the final buzzer here in Worcester. 89 points to 55. Worcester Wolves take down the uh, visiting Doncaster Eagles this afternoon. Shanice, give us your wrap up on that game. It's been, been you said it'd be a great game, and it yeah, really was. It really, really was a great game. I think, like I've like already said, the fact that Doncaster only had eight player rotation, I think that's what really killed them in their last half. Um, whereas I think Worcester exploited that and they tied them out, and it worked in their favour. Um, I think a big thing for Doncaster is they have to make their free throws. Yeah. I think that would have made 
Not necessarily a, a, a great impact, but it would have brought the score a lot closer and made, would have made them feel like a bit more confident that they could actually bring their game back. I think after it gets to about 30 points, you kind of start to feel for the player. So I think that's potential for these guys, especially in their next game. What's your what's your take out from this game looking at Worcester? You know, because for me it is all about the depth on that on that team and the fact that there is I, I can't see any weaknesses at the moment, or any, any obvious weaknesses at the moment. Oh no, like you have half pays and they can all really play and as you can see they can all shoot the ball, they can get in the paint, they can finish. So they are they are very versatile team. You can't really say they're a shooting team or they're a team that dominates in the paint because they can do both. And I think they've made a big statement today by doing by yeah. doing that and showing us that. Um, defensively, you can see they can make the changes. In the first half, we're in foul trouble. In the second half, definitely not so much. We had two or three fouls, and it's just been able to pull, pull, pull away from Doncaster. So it's a great performance from us tonight. Well, thank you for all your input this afternoon. I hope the ACL heals up soon, and we'll see you back on the on the floor in the uh, WBBL, the NBL, wherever, the WNBL, I don't know, we'll find out where, who knows, who knows, who knows, WNBA. You know? <laughs> oh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a word with somebody. <laughs> sort of, sort of, Nick Nurse, we know Nick Nurse, we'll have a chat with him. <laughs> Great stuff, thanks ever so much, Denise, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. 89.55, it's finished here in Worcester, make sure that you check back Worcester Walls TV, subscribe and um, hit the... Uh, the bell icon at the bottom so you're notified all the games will be streamed live and in full and of course don't forget get yourselves down here to the arena week after week great weekends of sport all through the season but that's it from us from me Janelle and I and uh, my very special guest this afternoon Shanice Turner what a pleasure to have you with me that's it take care and we'll see you next time bye for now <laughs>